Okay, bit of a busy road here, but we're not staying near the road today. We're going to have a wander. Well, not exactly off the beaten track, because it's the track we're following. But let's get ourselves out into the fields and woods. Have a look what we can see on this fine autumn day. Right, stay close. Okay, so this is an electric fence, not going to touch it. So we're going to head up along this track here, off into some woods. It's a lovely autumn morning, right near the end of September. A little bit of a chill in the air, but still not quite enough for me to put on the long trousers. Let's wander off across the fields here and see what we can find. Still a few blackberries around in the hedgerows. I tend to think at this time of year they're probably not quite worth picking really. They tend to be full of insect larvae and a little bit mushy and tasteless at this time of year. But hopefully we can find something else to tempt our palate. What do you think, Eva? They're a bit big, aren't they? Come on. Good girl. Come on, keep yourself moving. Come on. Come on. Come on, you squeeze through there. Tiny little bit overgrown this path. I don't think it's walked very much by people. And so I am, ouch, getting a little bit stung on my legs from stinging nettles. But never mind, it won't kill me. Let's just stop for a moment and admire the view. Planes up there circling after taking off from Eastleigh Airport. And look at this, look at the fine detail on this leaf. I just want to stop, because what we're watching here, we're actually watching autumn just happening in a microcosm here. Look at the colours on this leaf. Everywhere you look at this time of year, autumn is happening in little ways. So I got Eva back on the lead now because we're going to go over a railway bridge here, footbridge over a railway. I think it might once have been a, a road bridge. But we're going to cross over the railway here. And I obviously don't want her darting down the side and ending up on the track. That's Botley Station down there. And that way goes off to Hedge End and Eastley. But anyway, the other reason for keeping her on the lead is that in this bit of woodland through here, they sometimes do play pigeon shooting. So I've just got to make sure there's nothing like that going on before we head off into the woods. Now, look at this. Here's something which if we find them in a better place, we might be able to take advantage of today. Sweet chestnuts, and I can see, let's zoom in so I can show you, right there, they are bursting open. So with a bit of luck, and if we get there before the squirrels, we might bag ourselves some sweet chestnuts today and have them back at home roasted. Here's one, squirrels had that one open, look. 
and I've got my basket with me and I hope not to come back empty handed today but even if we do it's worth it to get outside and just have a look at some of the sights of autumn. So here I'm just, just looking across a field into the sunlight with the dew on the grass and it's just actually quite nice to get out here and see the world still trying to wake up even though the seasons are kind of going to sleep. <clears throat> okay, they're not clay pigeon shooting today, so dog off the lead. Wait a minute. Okay, so Eva can come off the lead and have a little sniff around. I have searched these woods in the past for edible fungi, and I didn't really find very much of interest in this location. Um, and I'm certainly not going to go rummaging around there today. We've had a bit of a dry summer and actually the terrestrial fungi are actually pretty sparse this year anyway. So uh, I'm not focusing on fungi today. We're going to look for a few other things. Chestnuts and maybe some fruit. Eva? Eva? So just looking here, there's some very big chestnut shells on the ground, but they've all been opened up and emptied by the squirrels. Important to remember that uh, it's their food. We're the interlopers here. There we go, there's a bit of clay pigeon down there, that orange thing in the middle of the frame. A bit of clay pigeon. They do clay shooting in these woods. Right, come on then. Now I can hear farm machinery up ahead. And so I'm just going to put Eva back on the lead until we figure out what's actually going on. Yeah, and we've got cows in this field with calves possibly. So uh, I'll keep Eva on the lead because we'll probably get investigated by these cows. They're curious animals. OK, well, here's not a bad little spot for chestnuts. And the best way to do this, I've found, is just to kind of roll them underfoot. And then just to roll them underfoot and then a little kernel comes out. So yeah, we'll find a few here that have fallen probably during the night and that the squirrels haven't quite got to yet. I don't think we're going to fill our basket, but we might have a little taste anyway. So there are more chestnut trees up there. Quite a good one here, but not much on the ground. So let's have a look up here. I can see lots of chestnuts on that tree up there. It's a bit awkward because I've got to keep the dog on the lead because of the cows down in the field there. Okay, I can see lots of chestnut shells on the ground. So we're just gonna have a look around here and see what we get. There's a few that are just laying out on the ground there like that, which we'll have. Eva, would you stop pulling? Yeah, a few that are just laying straight on the ground like that. Easy pickings. Oh, that sound over there. Green woodpecker that was, that sort of laughing, cackling cry is a green woodpecker. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off now so that I've got hand free to pick some chestnuts and we'll have a look at what I've got when, when we're finished. Yeah, we'll be moving in a minute either. I know. It's boring. That one's a bit wrinkled, which probably means it's not going to have much of a nut inside it, but that one's lovely. Right, this is one of the things I actually set out to try to find this morning, and this is a service tree or checkers and these berries well they're actually poems are edible but not quite yet so i'm going to pick a few of them and then we'll go and sit down somewhere and i'll explain how it works there's not an awful lot of them on the tree here actually i'm sad to say obviously not been a brilliant year for them but never mind we'll pick a few because they're quite interesting okay it's time to move on i think because the cows are finding it hard to contain their curiosity and they're going to be over here 
investigating us before very long so I think we'll head off down the field here and get out of their field let them do their thing we'll do ours okay so let's have a slightly closer look at this checkers fruit now it's a relative of uh, rowan mountain ash close relative of rowan it's in the same genus sorbus I believe um, slightly more distantly related to apples and hawthorn and everything else like that. It's in the rose family, that's what I mean by that. Now these fruits, called checkers, not really clear why they are called checkers actually. There are various competing theories. I'll put a link to my website where I picked these and actually I've discussed the naming of them a bit more detail. But uh, they're not edible when they're fresh. Like uh, Eva's, <laughs> Eva's eating feathers over there. Okay. Right, so these fruits are not edible in their fresh, sort of ripe state. They have to be over ripened or bletted. A bit like medlars, which they are, of course, distantly related to. And so they have to be left to ripen, and they will turn from this sort of tan buff colour to a more purplish, dark brown colour. You can see this one here has actually started to go but it's still not quite ripe enough to eat. So they will soften and they will turn into a sort of brownish, slightly translucent purple brown color. And at that point they become edible. And we'll cover that in another video. So if you want to watch that, please do subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we will cover what these taste like in another video. They're actually quite tasty, I've had them before. Spoilers, they taste kind of like sour, sour apple but they have a unique flavour all of their own. But we'll cover that in a future video. We'll also have a look at, I think, look, we've got some lovely chestnuts here. Just important to note, these are sweet chestnuts. These are not conkers or horse chestnuts. Horse chestnuts are more spherical in shape. They are in a less prickly case usually, and they don't have this little tuft on the top. Okay, I thought it'd be good to have a look at the difference between sweet chestnuts and horse chestnuts, horse chestnuts or conkers. So these are the sweet chestnuts I picked when we went out for a walk. Now let's just have a look at the features of these. They're most usually sort of teardrop shape, sort of fattened teardrop shape, very often flat on one side, always with a scar on the bottom here, and always with a little point on top that if you've picked them directly from the shell, that will still have a little tuft of bristles on there, which was protruding through the end of the, the shell. I think that's actually, I think that's the remains of the anther or something like that where the pollen actually entered when it was a flower, possibly. Anyway, so those are sweet chestnuts and they are, well when we find them wild in this country there's usually one decent chestnut in the shell and maybe two that haven't formed properly. Sometimes you're lucky and you find really fat ones that have all developed, but most usually there's one or two decent ones in the shell and that's why they have this shape. They're kind of broad shouldered half moon shape when we look at that way. So that's sweet chestnuts and remember the shells of these, that they, the casings that these fell out of were a forest of needle like spines, just interlocking needle like spines. So let's have a look at horse chestnuts or conkers. These are most usually spherical in shape and they don't have that flat bottom with the scar on it. They just have the scar really just about anywhere actually. And so sometimes you do get two in a shell. So sometimes they have a flat side, but even so they're kind of hemispherical still. And they have a different pattern on them. So these, are, these have like a walnut type grain, little swirls and whirls. It's very actually pretty. Whereas chestnuts, sweet chestnuts, always have a, a striated shell like this. You can see lines in that beautiful brownish nut brown sheen. The shells that, or the casings that horse chestnuts fall out of are less spiny. They are, the spines are more stout and more robust, but there are often fewer of them. And in fact, sometimes it's possible to find these and they're completely absent altogether or they're just little bumps so sometimes these are completely kind of nude 
um, and other times they'll be maybe as, as spiny as this but the spines are always short and robust and actually very pointy. So let's just open this one up. So there we go. There's the brand new horse chestnut out of the shell and here we can actually see the patterning on the nut. So, sweet chestnuts, good to eat, very delicious. Horse chestnuts, do not eat them. They are definitely not good to eat, possibly poisonous. Anyway, let's go cook a few of these chestnuts and then we can see what they're like when they're cooked. So before I cook them, I'm actually just going to prick a hole in both sides of the nut. If you don't do this, they will explode in the oven or under the grill when they're heated. You can cook them on a charcoal grill, you can cook them under a sort of broiler type grill, you can cook them in the oven, or you could probably just roast them in a pan over heat. But I'm going to put these under the grill today. But yeah, as I say, I always, always prick two holes in them, one either side like that, and if you don't, they will explode. If you do, they probably won't explode. Uh, you will, if you cook a pan full of chestnuts, even if you've pricked them all, one of them will always go kaboom. Okay, we had a bit of a mishap um, in the oven. All except for two of the chestnuts have gone kaboom. Uh, but never mind, we're still going to try eating them anyway. So that's what they're like when they're cooked. Sort of crumbly. Let's have a taste. Hmm. So almost potatoey sort of flavour. Sweeter than potato and drier, but quite similar. So fortunately, most of the exploded pieces did actually stay back on the tray, so we still get to eat them. But there we go. So that's roasted sweet chestnuts. Very delicious. Something I really look forward to at this time of year. And they're really nice when they're as fresh as this. Now all the way along this hedge we can find sloes and there are some wild plums here as well. And what we've got here I think is a bullis plum. It looks a bit like sloes, it's very very small fruit on it. But the growth habit of the tree is quite different from sloes and it's not a spiny tree. So I think this is either a slow plum hybrid or it's a, just a wild bullis plum. So we're past the field with the cows in it, through the gate there. Eva can come off again for a little scamper. And yeah, look at the slows in the bushes here, in the hedgerow, lots and lots of slows. I'm not about picking slows today. We've got some chestnuts and checkers. I don't know if you saw that on the camera. A squirrel just ran right across in front of Eva and she didn't even notice. Come on. So thanks for joining me and Eva on this autumn walk in search of a few little treats. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>